In this video, we'll board the Trias and journey to the deepest known point on Earth, the Mariana Trench. Welcome to Enigma Files. We all know that most of Earth is covered by oceans, with land accounting for less than 30% of the surface. So, it might seem logical to assume that humanity already has a comprehensive understanding of the oceans. However, the truth is that humans have explored only about 5% of the oceans. The remaining 95%? That's largely the deep sea. With our current technology, exploring shallow regions of the ocean is relatively straightforward. But when it comes to the deep sea, it becomes a monumental challenge. Let's compare this with space exploration. Take the moon, for example. So far, five nations have successfully achieved soft landings on the moon. Additionally, 12 astronauts have walked on its surface. Let's look at ocean exploration. As of today, only four manned submersibles worldwide have reached the deepest point of the Mariana Trench. For humanity, the oceans remain just as mysterious as outer space. The Mariana Trench is located in the Western Pacific Ocean. It spans a length of 2,550 kilometers, 1,584 miles, and has an average width of 70 kilometers, 43.5 miles. Its deepest point is at the bottom of the Challenger Deep, plunging approximately 11,034 meters, 36,201 feet below sea level. That's deep enough to fit Mount Everest entirely inside it. But how did humans discover such a profoundly deep place? The story begins in 1872, when the British Royal Navy ship, the HMS Challenger, embarked on a three-year scientific expedition. The ship carried over 220 crew members and five scientists. Their mission was to explore the oceans and uncover the mysteries of the unknown. But they also aimed to test a prevalent theory in marine science at the time, the Azoic Hypothesis, which claimed that life could not exist below 550 meters, 1,804 feet. Today, we know this idea is incorrect. But back then, the deep sea was widely considered a barren, lifeless void. From a human perspective, the deep ocean seemed uninhabitable due to the immense pressure and total darkness. This led to widespread misconceptions and biases about life in the deep. After over two years of sailing, in March 1875, the HMS Challenger arrived in waters east of Guam and the Mariana Islands. Using the dredger, they discovered an abundance of life below 550 meters. The deeper they explored, the stranger the creatures they found. It didn't take long for the scientists to conclude that the Azoic hypothesis was completely wrong. Life thrived even in the deep sea. But there was another discovery that stunned them even more. During their voyage, the crew periodically measured the depth of the ocean by dropping a rope weighted with lead into the water. The rope was nearly 7,000 meters, 22,965 feet long. In this region, however, even when the entire length of the rope was deployed, the lead weight didn't touch the seabed. So, they kept adding more rope, eventually using every bit available on board. A total of 8,184 meters, 26,850 feet. Still, the weight didn't reach the bottom. This depth is equivalent to flipping Mount Everest upside down and submerging it underwater. In May of the same year, the five scientists on board presented their findings in a report. The report stated that the deepest part of the Mariana Trench was approximately 8,184 meters, 26,850 feet below sea level making it the deepest point on Earth. They also discovered over 4,700 previously unknown species of marine life. This expedition caused quite a stir in the marine science community at the time and could be considered a scientific revolution. However, as you might have noticed, the reported depth of 8,184 meters, 26,850 feet, was incorrect. Due to the limited technology available then, it took humanity another 76 years to accurately measure the depth of the Mariana Trench. In 1951, 
the Challenger 2 revisited the Mariana Trench. This time, the ship was equipped with new sonar technology, specifically designed to map the trench's structure. By emitting sound waves toward the ocean floor and using a stopwatch to record the time it took for the waves to return, the Challenger 2 successfully charted the Mariana Trench for the first time. They discovered a canyon with an average depth of over 8,000 meters, 26,247 feet, and a length exceeding 2,500 kilometers, 1,553 miles. On the southern end of the trench, they found a vertical drop over 3,000 meters, 9,843 feet deep, known as the Challenger Deep. This remains the deepest known point in the ocean, with a maximum depth of 11,034 meters, 36,201 feet. The revelation that the Earth had such an astonishingly deep point captivated many, including a young man named Jacques Picard. He declared his intention to explore the Mariana Trench and witness the deep sea world firsthand. But how could someone reach such depths? Jacques was inspired by the work of American biologist William Beebe. In 1930, Beebe, alongside his friend Otis Barton, designed a bathysphere, a spherical steel submersible. The bathysphere was 1.42 meters, 4.65 feet in diameter and weighed 2,250 kilograms, 4,960 pounds. It had three small windows, each 20 centimeters, 7.9 inches in diameter and could accommodate two people. It carried enough oxygen to support its occupants for six hours. However, due to technological limitations, it lacked a propulsion system and relied on a steel cable for descending and ascending. An adjacent rubber hose contained a telephone line and two electrical wires, enabling communication and lighting. Every five seconds, the team on the surface would check in with the bathysphere. If communication was lost, they would immediately pull it back up. Using this bathysphere, BB and Barton reached depths of over 900 meters, 2,953 feet, in the waters near Bermuda. During their descent, BB described the surrounding deep blue void and the gradual fading of sunlight as they went deeper. To his amazement, even in the pitch dark environment, life thrived. He remarked, only the dead should dwell at this depth. Some later approached Beebe with offers of funding, hoping he would take the bathysphere to the Mariana Trench. Beebe quipped, if you want me dead, just say so. While joking, he had a valid point. Beebe had calculated that for every 10 meters, 33 feet of ocean depth, pressure increases by one atmosphere. At depths of over 100 meters, 328 feet, the bathysphere would endure nearly 10 atmospheres of pressure. To reach the Mariana Trench, setting aside the question of whether the steel cable could even be long enough, the ship on the surface might not handle the immense weight. Furthermore, at depths of 10,000 meters, 32,808 feet, the bathysphere would face thousands of atmospheres of pressure. If the equipment failed, the occupants would be crushed instantly. Thus, without a more reliable submersible, no one dared to attempt such a journey. Jacques Picard shared his dream with his father, hoping he could design a better submersible inspired by Beebe's bathysphere. His father, Auguste Picard, was a renowned physicist. Some of you might recognize him from historical photographs. Here, he stands in the back row, far left, alongside figures like Albert Einstein. At that time, Auguste Picard was deeply interested in the motion of hot air balloons. He designed a pressurized aluminum spherical cabin that allowed people to ascend to great heights without needing additional pressure equipment. On May 27, 1931, he took off from Augsburg, Germany. In a hydrogen balloon he designed and successfully reached an altitude of 15,781 meters, 51,833 feet, becoming the first human to enter the stratosphere. Later, when his son shared the idea of exploring the deep sea, Picard thought he could modify his aluminum spherical cabin for underwater exploration. He began designing a submersible, but World War II delayed the process for several years. The design was completed in 1945. This initial submersible design looked quite different from the bathyscaphe, Trias, that Jacques Picard later developed. 
Auguste Picard proposed replacing steel cables, as relying on them for descent and ascent was limited and risky. Steel cables could only extend so far from the ship and were prone to dangerous oscillations in seawater. Instead of steel cables, Picard leveraged his expertise in balloon design. He placed a buoyancy tank resembling a boat above the man cabin, which was filled with gasoline. Unlike fuel, the gasoline served to provide buoyancy. Additionally, two containers were filled with iron pellets, each capable of holding approximately 9 metric tons, 19,841 pounds. These pellets facilitated descent, and releasing them enabled ascent, eliminating the need for steel cables and allowing the submersible to move freely in the ocean. Picard named his invention Bathyscape Triest. Between 1953 and 1957, the Triest underwent 48 deep-sea trials, descending to depths exceeding 3,500 meters, 11,483 feet, to test its ability to withstand deep-sea pressure. After numerous modifications, it achieved a successful descent to 7,315 meters, 23,969 feet, in 1958, setting a record for the deepest manned dive at the time. This accomplishment paved the way for the planned exploration of the Mariana Trench. However, due to Auguste Picard's advanced age and the high risk involved, he did not participate in the dive. Instead, his son, Jacques Picard, and a 28-year-old U.S. Navy Lieutenant, Don Walsh, were selected to undertake the mission. On January 23, 1960, Jacques Picard and Don Walsh boarded the Triest and began their descent into the Mariana Trench. Initially, at depths of 0 to 40 meters, 0 to 131 feet, they were excited by the vibrant coral reefs and schools of fish visible around them. This is a depth recreational divers can also reach, so they felt relatively relaxed at this stage. However, as they descended to 100 meters, 328 feet, the atmosphere grew tense. Light levels decreased significantly. The surrounding blue deepened and creaking sounds emanated from the cabin windows, increasing their anxiety. At 200 meters, 656 feet, sunlight completely disappeared forcing them to switch on the submersible searchlights, which could only illuminate a range of a few meters. To their surprise, instead of total darkness, they saw many small glowing points. Upon closer observation, these turned out to be terrifying fish with sharp teeth and bioluminescent lights. The pair immediately reported their observations to the surface. By the time they reached 1,000 meters, 3,281 feet, Communication with the surface became intermittent, likely due to the immense pressure, about 92 times atmospheric pressure, equivalent to the surface of Venus. Despite investigating, they couldn't identify the cause. Minutes later, communication was completely lost. Even after losing contact, they chose to continue descending and soon reached a depth of 3,800 meters, 12,467 feet, the depth at which the Titanic had sunk. On April 15, 1912, the unsinkable luxury liner struck an iceberg during its transatlantic voyage and sank, resulting in the deaths of over 1,500 of the 2,200 passengers and crew on board. When they descended beyond 9,000 meters, approximately 29,528 feet, the sound of shattering glass broke the tense silence. The glass in front of their cockpit had cracked. At this point, Don Walsh felt uneasy and suggested, maybe we should head back up. Going deeper is too risky now. The glass is already cracked. They were already at a depth of over 9,000 meters, far exceeding any previous record. But Jacques Picard refused. No way. We've come this far. Turning back now would make all our efforts meaningless. So they made the bold decision to continue descending. Luckily, the glass didn't shatter further. Finally, after five hours underwater, they reached the lowest point of the Mariana Trench, the Challenger Deep, the deepest known location on Earth. Their gauges showed a depth of 10,916 meters, 35,814 feet. However, they didn't find anything extraordinary there. Even with lights, visibility extended only about 10 meters, 33 feet. 
and with the glass crack still haunting them, they stayed at the bottom for just 20 minutes before beginning their ascent. When they surfaced, everyone on the ship cheered for them, including Jacques Picard's father, Auguste Picard. Jacques recalled how, as a child, he had once welcomed his father back in a similar way when his father descended from a high-altitude ballooning expedition. Auguste Picard had always loved adventure and challenges. Now, his son had become the first human to reach the bottom of the Mariana Trench and return safely, continuing his father's legacy of exploration. The feet of Jacques Picard and Don Walsh quickly spread worldwide. In Ontario, Canada, a six-year-old boy was captivated by the news. This boy, fascinated by the ocean from a young age, grew up to become an avid deep-sea diver. He would dive 33 times to the wreck of the Titanic and, on March 26, 2012, descend solo to the Mariana Trench aboard the Deep Sea Challenger. He spent three hours at the bottom, becoming the second human in history to reach the Mariana Trench and the first person to do so alone. That boy was James Cameron, the director of the film Titanic. Years later, on April 29, 2019, Victor Vescovo piloted the limiting factor to the Challenger Deep, setting a Guinness World Record for achieving the greatest vertical distance on Earth without leaving its surface. What does this mean? In 2010, Vescovo had climbed Mount Everest, 8,848 meters or 29,029 feet. By also reaching the Earth's lowest point, he covered a total vertical distance of 19,772 meters, 64,981 feet. On November 10, 2020, China's Fendu's Striver reached the Challenger Deep, descending 10,909 meters, 35,791 feet. This dive carried three passengers marking the largest group ever to reach the trenches' depths and making China the fifth nation to masterman deep-sea technology. Today, only two submersibles are capable of manned descents to depths of 10,000 meters, 32,808 feet, the limiting factor U.S. and the Fendu's China. When Jacques Picard and Don Walsh returned from the Mariana Trench, they were asked what they saw at the bottom. Picard replied, The seafloor isn't barren as we thought. Despite the freezing temperature of about 2.4 degrees Celsius 36.3 degrees Fahrenheit, there were creatures like sea cucumbers and sea anemones. And beneath the sediment, I even saw shrimp-like animals. However, their claims were met with skepticism. Many scientists at the time dismissed their observations, insisting that life couldn't survive the extreme pressures of the deep sea. Now we know they were right. The shrimp Picard described do exist. Today, we call them amphipods. Recent studies have revealed that amphipods contain a chemical compound called trimethylamine enoxide TMAO. This substance likely helps these organisms survive under the immense pressure of the deep ocean. For these creatures, the deep sea may not be harsh. It might even be comfortable. Human understanding of the ocean has been a slow journey. In the 16th century, we learned how vast the oceans are. By the 20th century, we began to understand their depths. The Mariana Trench is just one of many trenches under the ocean, and we still know very little about it. However, research has uncovered traces of microbes in the trench. These microbes have an extraordinarily low metabolic rate, allowing them to live for tens of thousands or even millions of years. Such discoveries are invaluable for scientific research. Perhaps one day, they will help answer the ultimate questions of life. Where do we come from? And where do we go after death? If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe.